This video presents examination of the motor system, which includes assessment of body position, involuntary movements, muscle bulk, muscle tone, strength, and coordination, and testing of the reflexes, which assesses both motor and sensory functions. In this video, you'll see the examiner assess a healthy patient. In clinical practice, you may detect the same normal findings in patients, or you may discover normal variations or abnormal findings. Begin the examination of the motor system by observing the patient's body position at rest and during movement. I'm going to move these up for a minute. Also, watch for involuntary movements. Can I see your hands? Next, assess muscle characteristics beginning with muscle bulk. To do this, carefully inspect the muscles of the shoulders, arms, hands, thighs, and legs, noting any atrophy. Let me do all the work here. Then, evaluate the patient's muscle tone or resistance to passive stretch. Encourage the patient to relax. Then, take one hand in yours and, while supporting the elbow, flex and extend the patient's fingers, wrist, elbow, and shoulder in one coordinated movement. The patient's arm should move easily and smoothly with little resistance. Repeat on the other side. Once again, let me do all the work. To assess muscle tone in the legs, extend the patient's leg at the knee and move the foot up and down at the ankle. Note the patient's resistance to your movements. Assess muscle strength using force compatible with the patient's strength. Usually, the patient's dominant side is stronger than the non-dominant side. Begin by testing flexion and extension at the elbow by having the patient pull and push against your hand. Straighten it out. Push away. Bend your fist back. Next, test extension of the wrist. Make a fist. Bend your fist back. Around my fingers. Now test Squeeze the patient's grip. You Cross your middle and index fingers to protect them. Good. Then ask the patient Again. to squeeze as hard as possible squeeze while you try to remove can. your fingers. Normally, you should have trouble removing them. Continue testing muscle strength by asking the patient to turn his palm down and spread his fingers. Check them. abduction by trying to force them together. Relax for a second. Then, test opposition of the thumb. To do this, ask the patient to try to touch the tip of his little finger with the thumb while you resist the movement. Assess muscle strength in the legs. Test hip flexion by placing your hand on the patient's anterior thigh and providing resistance. Relax. Then, test hip extension by placing your hand on the patient's posterior thigh and providing resistance. Push your thigh down against my hand. To test Relax. hip abduction, place your hands firmly on the table outside the patient's knees. Ask him to spread both legs against your hands. To test hip adduction, place your hands between the patient's knees and ask him to bring his legs together. Note the strength. Try to lift your foot off the table. Continue by testing muscle strength at the knee. To assess extension, Relax. support the patient's knee in flexion and ask him to straighten his leg against your hand. Try to lift this foot off the table. Note the strength and compare it with the other side. Relax. Don't let me lift this foot off the table. To assess knee flexion, shift your hands but leave the patient's leg flexed at the knee. Then ask the patient to keep his heel on the table as you try to straighten the leg by pulling it upward. Again, note the strength and compare it with the other knee. Finally, test dorsiflexion and plantar flexion at the ankle by asking the patient to pull up and push down against your hand. All of these tests can also be performed with the patient seated and holding on to the table for support. Your knee up towards the ceiling. Hip flexion. Put your knees apart. Hip abduction. Hard as you can. Relax. Hip together. adduction. Hard as you can. 
Knee extension. Knee flexion. Relax down against ankle plantar flexion. Relax. And ankle dorsiflexion. Relax. To assess coordination, you'll evaluate rapid alternating movements and point to point movements. Begin by assessing rapid alternating movements. To assess the arms, show the patient how to move his hands. Observe the speed, rhythm, and smoothness of the movements. The patient's dominant hand may be better coordinated. Using your right hand, I'd like you now to Now ask the patient to tap the distal joint of his thumb with the tip of his index finger as rapidly as possible. And the other hand? Again, observe the movement's speed, rhythm, and smoothness. The tip of my Next, finger assess point-to-point right -point movements. Do this right. several times, moving forth. your finger so that the patient has to change directions. Observe the smoothness and accuracy of pointing. Clumsiness and overshooting with this movement suggest cerebellar disease. Up, then, with your finger in one place, ask the patient to it. point to it, raise his arm, and lower it to touch your finger. After several times, have the patient do this with his eyes closed. Inaccurate pointing with the eyes closed suggests a loss of position sense. Repeat on the other side. I want you to tap my to assess leg coordination, as ask the patient to tap your hand as quickly as possible with the ball of each foot. Note any slowness or awkwardness. Compare sides. The feet normally perform less well than the hands. To test point-to-point -point movements of the legs, ask the patient to place one heel on the opposite knee and then run it down his shin to the big toe. The patient should be able to do this smoothly and accurately. Note any tremor or awkwardness. Assess both legs. Continue the examination by observing the patient's gait, which provides information about coordination, position sense, and muscle strength. Slowly across the room. Turn, As the patient walks, observe his posture, balance, arm swing, and leg movements. The gait should be relaxed and balanced with easy alternating arm swings. The face and head should lead the rest of the body on turns. Next, ask the patient to walk heel to toe in a straight line. This kind of gait, also called tandem walking, assesses cerebellar function and position sense. Then have the patient walk on his toes to test the strength of plantar flexion and on his heels to test dorsiflexion at the ankles. These actions also test balance. Next, ask the patient to hop in place, hop first down. on one leg and then the other. This ability indicates right an intact foot? motor system in the legs normal cerebellar function, and good position sense. Good. Now I want you to stand just on your Finally, right foot. ask the patient to do a shallow knee bend, first on one leg and then on the other. Down. Perform the Romberg test, which primarily tests position sense. To do this, ask the patient to stand with his feet together. Normally, he should be able to maintain this posture with his eyes open, indicating intact Close cerebellar function. Now have the patient do the same thing for 20 to 30 seconds with his eyes closed. His posture should remain steady with only minimal swaying, indicating intact position sense. Open if the eyes. patient maintains this posture with his eyes open but not with his eyes closed, he has a positive Romberg test. Now check for pronator on. drift. Straight to do this, ask the patient to hold his arms forward and parallel with the palms up and to close now his close eyes, eyes for 20 to 30 seconds. Normally, the patient can maintain this position, but watch for downward drifting of one arm and pronation of the forearm, which suggest mild hemiparesis. Stay just as you are. Don't Finally, ask eyes. the patient to keep his arms up and eyes closed while you tap the arms briskly downward. Normally, the patient's arms return smoothly to the horizontal position. Begin assessing deep tendon reflexes by testing the biceps reflex. To do this, the patient's arm must be relaxed, 
partially flexed at the elbow and positioned with the palm down. To stretch the muscle, depress the biceps tendon with your thumb or index finger. Strike your thumb or finger briskly with the reflex hammer. You should feel the biceps muscle contract and see flexion of the forearm. Here you see a two plus response. Just keep your arm as relaxed as you can. To assess the triceps reflex, flex the patient's arm at the elbow with the palm toward the body and pull the arm slightly across the chest. Strike the triceps tendon above the elbow. Watch for contraction of the triceps muscle and extension at the elbow. Here you see two plus responses. To elicit the brachioradialis reflex, the patient's forearms should rest on the lap with the palms down. When the patient is ready, strike the radius one to two inches above the wrist. Observe for flexion and supination of the forearm. Again, you see two plus responses. To test the knee reflex, locate the patellar tendon in the patient's flexed knee. Briskly tap the tendon just below the patella. Feel for contraction of the quadriceps and look for extension of the knee. These are two plus responses. To test the ankle reflex, extend the patient's leg somewhat at the knee, dorsiflex the ankle firmly, and strike the Achilles tendon. Feel and watch for plantar flexion. These are two plus responses. Support your foot. To elicit the plantar response, stimulate the lateral aspect of the sole of the foot from the heel to the ball, curving medially across the ball. Use the lightest stimulus that will provoke a response. Note movement of the toes, normally flexion. Dorsiflexion of the big toe with fanning of the other toes is a pathological response known as the Babinski response. For a patient who cannot sit up, all of these tests can be performed with the patient lying down. Biceps reflex, triceps reflex, brachioradialis reflex, knee reflex, ankle reflex, plantar response, and ankle clonus. Dorsiflexion of the big toe with fanning of the other toes is a pathological response known as the Babinski response. Relax your ankle. If leg reflexes seem hyperactive, test for ankle clonus. To do this, move the foot up and down a few times and then sharply dorsiflex the foot. While holding the foot in dorsiflexion, look and feel for sustained rhythmic oscillations. A few beats may be normally present. Now, If leg reflexes are symmetrically diminished or absent, use reinforcement. Have the patient lock his hands and pull just as you test the reflex. To reinforce arm reflexes, ask the patient to clench his teeth. If you suspect meningeal inflammation, test for meningeal signs. With the patient lying down, place your hands behind the patient's head and flex the neck forward until the chin touches the chest if possible. There should be no resistance or pain. As you flex the patient's neck, watch his hips and knees. Normally, they should remain relaxed and motionless. Hip and knee flexion with this maneuver is a positive Brzezinski's sign. Finally, flex one of the patient's legs at the hip and knee and then straighten the knee. This action normally produces discomfort behind the knee during extension, but should not cause pain. 
pain and resistance to knee extension is a positive Kernick's sign.